land of Omofia. There lived a mother named Mama Mena and her beautiful daughters named Ada and Oshe. Mama Nena loved Ada dearly and showered her with affection, but her heart was cold towards Ushe. From a young age, Ushe knew nothing but hardship and sufferings. Every morning, as the sun rose, Mama Nena could send Ushe to fetch water from the stream. It was a long, exhausting journey, but Ushe had no choice. She had to fill all the bucket in the house before she could rest. Meanwhile, Ada would sit with her friends, laughing and playing. Why does Mama hate me so much? Ushe often wondered, as she carried heavy load of firewood from the forest. Her hands were bruised and her back ached, but she pressed on. The other villagers noticed the disparity but said nothing, fearing the wrath of Mama Nena. One day, Ada and her friends cornered Ushi by the stream. Look who we have here, the little slave. Ada giggled. Her friends laughed and pushed Ushi around. Give me your necklace, Ada demanded, eyeing the only piece of jewelry Ushi owned. Ushi refused. But a sharp slap from Ada forced her to comply. Tears filled Ushe's eyes as she handed over the necklace. At home, Mama Nena showed no concern for Ushe's bruises. Instead, she piled more shots for her. You are so lazy and good for nothing, she scolded. Fetch more firewood and don't come back until you have enough for the week. Ushe's life was a constant struggle. She was often starved of food, surviving on scraps while Ada enjoyed lavish meals. But despite the hardship, Ushe remained kind and hardworking, holding onto a glimmer of hope that one day things would change. Years went by. Ada and Ushe grew into beautiful women. Many rich suitors came to ask for Ushe's hand in marriage. They were drawn by her beauty and kind nature. However, Mama Nena, fueled by jealousy, told lies to drive the suitors away. She claimed Ushi was a troublemaker and had a bad reputation. One fateful day, a very wealthy man named Emeka came to the village. He saw Ushi and instantly fell in love with her. Mama Nena saw this as a threat to her plans for Ushi and quickly plotted with her favorite daughter. Ada, you must tell Emeka lies about Ushi. Mama Nena instructed, since she had done many bad things, I cannot have children. Ada agreed, eager to sabotage her sister. When Emeka came visiting the next time, Ada approached him privately. Emeka, I need to tell you something about Ushi. She said, forging consign. She has done many terrible things, and she cannot have children. I thought you should know. Emeka was shocked and saddened. He had grown fond of Ushe, but couldn't ignore such serious allegations. Gradually, he began to distance himself from Ushe. Ushe noticed the change and was heartbroken, but didn't react, believing she had no control over her fate. Mama Nena, seeing her plan succeed, wasted no time in convincing Emeka to marry Ada. Ada is the better choice for you, she insisted. She is pure and will make a good wife. Emeka, swayed by their lies, agreed to marry Ada. The day of the wedding was a grand affair, but Ushe's heart was heavy. She watched from the shadow as her sister married the man she had hoped to build a future with. But despite the pain, she remained silent, bottling up her emotions. A few months later, a kind man named Ozo came to seek for Ushe's hand in marriage. Ozo was not as wealthy as Emeka, 
but he was comfortable and had a good heart. Mama Nena, seeing that Uzo was not rich, saw this as an opportunity to get rid of Ushe, and quickly she agreed to the marriage. After Ushe and Ozo were married, Mama Nena went to a native doctor. She paid him to place a curse on Ushe so she could never have children. The native doctor performed the ritual and Mama Nena returned home feeling satisfied. Years went by and Ushe remained childless. She visited many places seeking help but nothing worked. Her pain grew as she watched Ada give birth to a healthy child and soon became pregnant again. Ushe's life seemed destined for sorrow, but she continued to preserve. As Ushe struggled, Uzo collapsed at work one day. His colleagues rushed him to the hospital, and Ushe was called immediately. The doctor informed her that Uzo needed surgery to remove a boss appendix. The cost was more than Ushe could afford, so she rushed to her at to rush to Ada's house for help. Ada, please, I need money for Uzo's surgery. Ushe begged. Ada coldly replied, I don't have any money to give you. Get out of my house. Desperate, Ushe went to her mother, but her mother also refused to help. By the time Ushe returned to the hospital, it was too late. Uzo has died. Ushe wept bitterly, feeling the weight of her misfortune crushing over her. To make the matter worse, Ada and Mama Nena lied to Uzo's family, blaming Ushe for his death. Driven by guilt and anger, Uzo's family shakes Ushe out of their home. Homeless and broken, Ushe wandered the street, unsure of what next to do. One day, she met a former classmate named Ifoma, who barely recognized her due to her tattered appearance. Ushe explained her ordeal, and the classmates took her in, offering her a chance at a new beginning. Ifoma told Ushe that she needed to seek revenge on her mother and sister for all the pains and sufferings they have caused her. So, she took Ushe to a powerful queen mother known for granting wealth and power. The Queen Mother listened to Ushe's story and agreed to help, but there was a catch. You must sacrifice something dear to you, she said. It must be a child between the age of 1 to 10 years old. Ushe cried, knowing she had no one to sacrifice. The Queen Mother then suggested Ada's daughter, who was 8 years old. Ushe refused, torn between her desire for revenge and the innocence of the child. But as the queen mother has reminded her of the curiosity she had endured, Ushi reluctantly agreed. Men were sent to kidnap Ada's daughter, and they successfully kidnapped Ada's daughter and brought her to the queen mother. The queen mother performed a dark ritual, and the child began to vomit money, and then, and then taught Ushi to take the child to her home. Ushe took the child home as instructed by the queen mother. She felt a pang of guilt, but the money that appeared was enough to start transforming her life. Ushe used the money to rent a small but comfortable house, buy new clothes and start a business. Slowly, she began to rebuild her life. Meanwhile, Ada and her husband were searching everywhere for their missing daughter. Mama Nena joined the stash, but they found no trace of the child. The loss of her daughter drove a wedge between Ada and her husband, leading him to throw Ada and her unborn child out of, out of the house in his grief and anger. As the queen mother has promised, Ada's daughter continued to vomit money. Ushe quickly became wealthy, buying a big house and hiring servants. However, despite her newfound wealth, Ushe could not shake off the guilt and sadness in her heart. She often thought about Uzo and the happy life they could have had. Ushe's sudden wealth drew attention in the village. Many people 
curious about her rapid ride, speculated about how she had become so rich. Her former friends and distant relatives, who had once shown her, now tried to reconnect, but Uche gave them a long distance. One night, Uche was woken by a soft cry. She rushed to the shy's room and saw the little girl sitting on the floor, looking so weak and exhausted from the continuous vomiting of money. Uche felt a deep sense of remorse. I can't let this go on, Uche whispered to herself. She knew she had to do something to help the child, even if it meant losing her wealth. Uche decided to return to the Queen Mother to seek a way to release the child from the cause. She took the child with her and explained the situation to the Queen Mother. Please, there must be a way to save her. Uche pleaded. The Queen Mother looked at Uche with a mixture of pity and sternness. You choose this path, knowing the consequences, she said, but I can see that you have learned from your mistake. There is a way to free the child, but it will come at a great cost. Uche was willing to do anything to save the child. What must I do? She asked, her voice trembling. You must sacrifice all the wealth you have gained from the child, the queen mother explained. You must give away everything and start anew. Only then will the child be free. Meanwhile, Ada and her mother live in misery. Without her husband's support, Ada struggles to survive. She often thought about her lost child and the terrible things she had done to Ushe. The burden of the guilt weighed heavily upon her. After Ushe returned from the Queen Mother's place, she began the process of giving away her possession. She donated her business, her home, and all the money she had accumulated. The villagers were surprised by her sudden generosity, but they accepted her gifts gratefully. Once Ushe had given away everything, she, she returned to the Queen Mother with the child. The Queen Mother performed a final ritual that made the child to stop vomiting money. The child looked up at Uche with a faint smile, relieved to be free from the cause. Thank you, the child whispered, hugging Uche tightly. Uche felt a sense of peace she hadn't felt in a long time. Despite losing everything, she knew she had made the right choice. One day, she decided to return Ada's daughter to her family, knowing that Ada had suffered enough and she had heard rumors that Ada miscarried her second child as a result of everything that happened. When she did, she confessed everything to them. She blamed them for turning her into a monster. She cried and wept bitterly. Ada and her mother knelt down as she mother passed us, begged for Uche's forgiveness. Uche, with tears in her eyes, embraced them both. Forgive, forgiving them for all the pain they have caused her. Uche also asked for forgiveness for taking Ada's daughter and using her to make money. The family finally forgave each other. Ada was overjoyed and, and still filled with remorse. This act of kindness brought a sense of peace and healing that had been missing for so long. In the end, Uche, Ada, and Mama Nena work together to rebuild their family bond. Ushe's kindness and willingness to forgive helped mend the broken relationship, and their home was once again filled with love and laughter. The villagers witnessing this transformation learned a valuable lesson about the power of forgiveness and the destructiveness of jealousy and hatred. I hope you enjoyed this story. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on your bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I upload a video. Thank you so much. Bye.